Now this is the brand new Van Powers Urban Glide. And this bike is designed around easy city cruising. So if you're in the market for a bike to get around town, run some errands, or just cruise your local paved path, this one should be on your list to check out. Now the Urban Glide comes in three different models that you can choose from, the Ultra, the Pro, and this version, which is the standard. Now the standard model is going to be their most affordable model out of the line. Today, I'm gonna to go over all the features that you're gonna get on the standard model and mention a few things that you'll see on the Ultra and the Pro model. Now, the first thing that stood out to me whenever I unboxed this was the paint job. This one is their gray model and I absolutely love this color. This type of gray is becoming more and more popular on vehicles today, so to see it on a bike really does look impressive. I've never seen a bike painted in this color and I gotta say my whole family has said that this is the best looking paint job that they have seen on any bike that I've owned. Now with this standard model, you are going to get one size. On the Pro and the Ultra, you will get to pick between two different sizes, but don't let the size small fool you. I'm 5'11", and even with this setup that I've got right now, I still have room to raise the seat or extend the bars. So this would actually work for a rider that's quite a bit taller than me. I could see somebody about 6'2", being able to fit on this bike comfortably. And also, my wife is around 5'3", and she had room to lower the seat, so it would fit a rider probably closer to 5 foot just fine. Now one thing that I really like about this is the step through design is really, really nice. The step through is extremely low. As you can see, it's at the height of the chain ring on the crank set, which makes this one of the lowest step throughs that I've ever been on, making it super easy for anybody of any height to be able to get on. Now the low step through height is just one of the features that adds to all the comfort features that are on this bike. One of the big ones that comes on this bike is an adjustable stem. This stem can be raised up or down, so you can get this dialed in to exactly what you would want as a rider. Not only that, this does come with a fairly comfortable seat. Now, if you get the Pro or the Ultra, they do come with premium seats, so you may want to consider that as an option if you're looking at one of these bikes to purchase. Now, looking back here on the back, this bike is powered by a 500 watt rear hub motor. That gives you plenty of power for this Class 2 e-bike. Now, that is powered by a 48 volt battery that is completely removable. This battery is going to have 14.4 amp hours and it's gonna have a total of 690 watt hours, giving you an estimated range of 65 miles max. Now, one of the cool things that Van Powers did is they put a three amp charger on this standard model. You can get a four amp charger on the Pro or the Ultra, but having at least a three amp hour is gonna speed up that charging time. Now, one thing you'll notice right away whenever you step onto this bike is this massive computer display. I absolutely love that they put a very nice non-generic display on here that has a full color screen. And if you've ever ridden an e-bike with a color screen, it definitely does make a big difference, especially in bright daylight. And to control everything, you've got a really nice compact control center right here with just a power button, a plus and a minus button. And that's really all you need on these e-bikes. You don't need a big bulky control system. And this will give you just a little bit more room to fit other accessories like a bell or a cell phone holder. Now, along with all the electronics that come on this bike, you do get a front headlight and you also get a rear tail light. The front headlight is not super powerful, but it's gonna be bright enough to where traffic can see you and you'll be able to see your way if you need to get home late at night. Now, one thing I do really appreciate on any type of commuting or city bike is a rear tail light. This one not only lights up, but it has a built-in reflector and it will also start to flash whenever you hit those brake levers. Now, speaking of brakes, these do come with cable actuated brakes. They are not hydraulic. I would have loved to have seen hydraulic brakes on this bike, but I understand to keep it in the price point that they wanted to, they had to go with standard cable driven brakes. Now it will come with 180 millimeter rotors, front and back, so you're gonna have a good size rotor that should stop you with no problems. Now let's go ahead and talk about the drivetrain because that is gonna be something that you'll be using quite a bit on this bike. This is a seven speed Shimano shifter and you're gonna get a non-branded front crank set. It is gonna be 170 millimeter crank arms with a 42 tooth chain ring on the front. 
looking back on the back it does have the standard shimano cassette this is seven speeds and it's going to be a 14 to 28 tooth cassette i do wish that this would go down to say an 11 tooth instead of just a 14 because i did find that whenever i would hit that maximum 20 mile an hour pedal assist that this class 2 offers even at the lowest gear on the back, I would start to ghost pedal. Where if this had the 11 tooth instead of the 14 tooth as the smallest gear on the back, you wouldn't experience any of that ghost pedaling. And then of course, this does come with a Turney TZ derailleur on the back. So you're gonna get a high quality Shimano derailleur. It's not their highest end, but at least it's a Shimano branded derailleur. So you know your shifting is gonna be quality every single time. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a class two e-bike. So with throttle, you're gonna be able to go 20 miles an hour max. And with pedal assist, you're gonna hit that 20 mile an hour mark also. Now, if you go with the Ultra or the Pro, they're also gonna be class two, but they're gonna come with a torque sensor. This particular model comes with just a standard cadence sensor, so it's not gonna be as intuitive as say a torque sensor model would be. So if that's something that you're concerned with, you may wanna check out the Ultra or the Pro model. Now looking down here at the front suspension, this does come with a zoom fork. It is not air, it is just a standard spring hydraulic fork. It'll get the job done and it seems to absorb up those bumps in the roads and on the uh, paved trails pretty well. Now this does come with some wheels that are non-branded and they're 27 and a half in size. And it's gonna be wrapped with these nice Kenda tires that have really low rolling resistance. Now, one of the things I really like on the styling on this are these awesome metal fenders. They have this really cool kind of like unique shape to them. So it kind of gives it this futuristic, more modern look than just a standard rounded fender. And you get those both front and back. Not only that, you do get a really nice rear rack. This is something that I love to see on my city and commuter bikes. Now, one thing just to take note, the bars on this are a little bit thicker than most of the racks that I have on any of my other bikes. So some of the bags that I have will not clamp around this. So you're gonna wanna make sure that the bags that you get for this are gonna be designed to clip onto this little bit thicker tubing here. But other than that, this rack will hold up to 55 pounds. Okay, so I brought the Urban Glide out to the hill that I always test all my e-bikes on. This goes up to about 19% grade. We're gonna go ahead and start this on level five like I do all my bikes, and we're just gonna see how easily I can get up this hill. This is by far the steepest hill in my area, so it's a perfect test to see what these motors can actually do. All right, let's go ahead and let's get started. So I had a little bit of trouble with my microphone, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do a voiceover of what I said so you guys don't have to listen to all the wind noise. But my goal was at the bottom here is put it in level five and then get up to as fast as I can. And at this point, I'm at about 20 miles an hour right now. And this is at a 12% grade and it's gonna hold this 12% grade for just a little bit. And we seem to be maintaining the speed just fine. And here we're hitting about the 15% grade. I start to notice my speed slowing just a little bit. I got to about 16 miles an hour. And remember, I am in the hardest gear at this point. So I'm starting to think that I need to start downshifting so I can continue to pedal and have the motor assist me up this hill. And as I hit that 19% grade, I almost instantly dropped down to 13 miles an hour. So a three mile an hour loss. And I continued to drop all the way down to roughly about 10 miles an hour. And honestly, this 500 watt motor really surprised me. I didn't expect it to be able to pull up this hill quite as easily as what it did, but I think a lot of that has to do with the lightness of this bike. This bike is really light compared to a lot of the other bikes that I've ridden that have 500 watt motors on them. Now overall, I have found this bike to be an absolute joy to ride. Whenever I first got on it, I just kind of felt at ease. It's a super comfortable and just a cruising type of vibe that you get out of a bike like this. Now this is the standard model. So if you're looking for a little bit higher end component specs, or maybe even a mid motor design, you may want to check out the Ultra and the Pro. I've got some links below if you guys are interested in reading a little bit more about this bike or picking one up for yourself, I would appreciate it if you use those links. But if you guys enjoyed this video and you found it informative, click that like button, leave me a comment below, and if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.